RADIO stands for Radiance in the Dynamic Ocean. This is a five-year project that was funded by the Office of Naval Research as a coherent investigation of all the factors that could influence light propagation through the upper ocean. Around 30 scientists from 10 organisations have worked together on this project. Simultaneous measurements of many ocean parameters are helping us build up a complete picture of the factors influencing light propagation in the open ocean. Over the course of five years, there have been shore-based experiments and two research cruises. This video has been made by radio scientists to introduce the project and to show some of the instrumentation used. We'll focus on the second cruise, which took place in the Pacific Ocean just south of Hawaii in August and September 2009. Let's start with some basics about light in the ocean. There are two primary parameters that we're looking for in the light. That's radiance and the irradiance. The radiance is what you would see if you look through a cone. That cone defines the solid angle. Irradiance is the sum of all the radiance values if you look at a hemisphere. One of the important concepts in ocean optics is Snell's cone. And what this is is light that travels from the atmosphere and it's going straight down will continue to go straight down. But if it's coming from the horizon, it's going to get bent at an angle near 45 degrees. So instead of going sideways, it's actually traveling more downward. This means that there's a section of the ocean that's not lit by the atmosphere. And that's an area that we call totally internally reflecting because it's only lit from the light below. What we're seeing is a view from an underwater robot of the sky as it sits at the top of the water. It's going to dive, and when it dives, the sky shrinks down into Snell's cone. But you also see the vehicle, and that's because it's totally internally reflecting down below. So it's using the surface of the ocean as a mirror to take a picture of itself. The light entering the ocean from the sky is affected by the time of day, weather conditions, and what's in the atmosphere. The light underneath the surface also depends on the shape of that surface, the refractive index of the water, and the presence of small objects in the water which can scatter and absorb light. The main objective of the radio experiment is to look at how the radiance distribution in the ocean varies in time and how it's affected by conditions in the upper ocean. Light provides the energy for both the biology and the physics of the ocean. At the bottom of the ocean food chain are photosynthetic organisms, things like algae and phytoplankton, which use the sun's energy directly as fuel to build themselves and reproduce. Then they're the food, or the food of the food, for every other organism. Sunlight also heats the water, driving currents and mixing and influencing the weather. And of course many organisms in the ocean use light to see and signal and to camouflage themselves. Some of them are using remarkable mechanisms that we're only just starting to understand. On each cruise, the research vessel Kila Moana accompanied the floating instrument platform FLIP, and the instruments deployed from both vessels were sampling the same region of the ocean at the same time. These two vessels were chosen because they're extremely stable platforms to make ocean measurements from. FLIP has a unique design and extends 100 metres down below the surface, so it doesn't bounce up and down with the waves, and it also doesn't interfere with them. The Kila Moana has double hulls which make her very stable and also has lots of space to deploy instruments from her stern. On the Kila Moana, sky radiance was measured continuously along with wind, currents and weather conditions. LiDAR was used to monitor the surface wave field and a small boat was deployed to sample the surface microlayer. An acoustical resonator measured the bubble population just below the ocean surface and daily samples at different depths were taken to investigate the chemical constituents of the water. Two separate instruments measured the inherent optical properties down to 120 metres. A microstructure profiler made turbulence measurements and an AUV was deployed to measure downwelling irradiance at seven wavelengths. Finally, a camera called RADCAM was used to measure radiance from all directions with depth. On FLIP, the instrumentation was mostly used to characterise the wave field and make localised measurements of the light field. The sea surface was recorded from above using video at visible and infrared wavelengths and the bubbles from breaking waves were monitored using underwater acoustical techniques. An instrument called Porcupine measured the fluctuating light field just below the ocean surface. Polarised radiance distributions were measured both above the surface and below the surface. We'll talk about three groups of measurements that were made on this cruise. First of all, we'll talk about waves and turbulence which affect light because of the physical properties of water itself. 
Then we'll talk about how you measure the light fields. And finally, we'll discuss the measurement of particles and bubbles in the water and how these affect light traveling through the ocean. Ocean waves are constantly changing. Waves with different wavelengths move over the surface with different speeds, and the shape of any particular bit of ocean surface is given by the sum of the different waves moving over it at that instant. Non-linear interactions between different wavelengths are also possible, allowing energy to move from one wavelength to another. So instead of trying to count or measure individual waves, the scientists on FLIP used various methods to measure all the overall statistics of the wave field. These statistics can be used later in theoretical models of the sea surface. Two very basic parameters are the wave height and wave steepness. These were recorded by several methods, for example using laser reflections to monitor the surface height relative to FLIP's booms. FLIP is an excellent platform for measuring the wave field because the 20 meter booms reach out over the water surface and instruments can be deployed either from the top of the boom or from the rail that runs underneath. The relationship between the wave field and the number and size of breaking waves was also studied, from micro-breaking events to bigger whitecaps. Video was used to measure breaking wave statistics. Ocean turbulence can also affect light propagation. Hamantha and Scott are investigating the ocean microstructure. Our specific objectives are to examine the vertical distribution of turbulence and irradiant fluctuations in the upper part of the water column. We have two instruments, one profiler which measures turbulence at different depths and one profiler which carries optical sensors for measuring inherent optical properties and irradiance. Okay, so what we have is a microstructure profiler. This thing is designed to fall through the ocean and as it's falling make really fast measurements of different things. Up on top we have some light sensors because this program is about how the light changes in the ocean. So these are measuring light at 500 times a second. We have a couple floats, and this is a typical thing that happens three weeks into your cruise, something broke. This is not how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to have whiskers. And these little whiskers sit down here, and then as it goes down, they flip up, and they're drag plates. So it keeps it uh, falling slower, and it keeps it oriented. But we had one fall off, and so we had to figure out how to make it work. So this measures shear and temperature really fast. It's going 500 times a second. The idea is we want to measure on very small scales. So this white probe, it's a shear probe, and it measures small changes in velocity. And it actually has a little phonograph needle in there, and it just wiggles back and forth as the velocity changes. Uh, the black tip one, it had, if you look real close at the tip there's a little glass bead and out of that glass bead is a tiny piece of wire and that tiny piece of wire is used to measure the temperature and they're measuring at 500 times a second so it's able to measure the small vortices and eddies that exist in the ocean so these small swirls that you see and these swirls come from uh, the wind blowing on the surface and that creates stress that mixes it. It also cools the surface, or at night, the surface gets colder. Well, when water gets colder, it gets dense, and then it starts to sink. And as it sinks, it starts to mix up. And so we're looking for the mixing portion. We are examining the temporal variability of high frequency, temperature, and irradiance fluctuations at fixed depth. And in collaboration with Mark Moline and Ian Robbins at Cal Poly, we are also looking at the horizontal variability with an autonomous underwater vehicle. The, the two things we're trying to do for, for this study is we're trying to measure the spatial variability or the change in the parameters across the distance between FLIP and KM. And the second thing we're trying to do is measure the light field as you're going along with the wave field and against the wave field. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an AUV, put that in the water, and the AUV is going to swim between FLIP and the KM and measure and take samples and at the same time it's going to be swimming with the waves and then back with the waves and that's also going to be swimming perpendicular to the wave field. And supposedly, or we, we hypothesize that the light field will change with the, with the waves and how they're traveling. 